your thoughts on the Bitcoin ETF and its effect on Bitcoin. What happens next to Bitcoin? I got four or five questions on this topic. It's a very hot topic right now. I'm going to burst your bubble. I know a lot of people really want to see an ETF happen because to the moon and Lambos and all of that. Um, I think it's a terrible idea. I still think it's going to happen. I just think it's a terrible idea. I'm actually against ETFs. Uh, I think um, a Bitcoin ETF is going to be damaging to the ecosystem. And here's why. A Bitcoin ETF is basically going to be a very, very large custodial holder of Bitcoin. That large custodial holder of Bitcoin will hold Bitcoin on behalf of these shareholders and give them uh, a, a, trade, a traded share in that Bitcoin. Um, but they don't give the owners of the ETF any of the responsibilities and rights that a key holder of Bitcoin has. As someone who holds keys to Bitcoin, I have more rights and responsibilities than someone who is simply trading uh, in, in an exchange or um, has an exchange-traded fund. You see, I can do things like, for example, um, I can use my Bitcoin to vote. Uh, I can choose which exchanges to send my Bitcoin to if I want to send it to an exchange. Um, I can choose to um, to uh, uh, pick up, for example, fork coins in another fork um, because I have the original keys. If there is ever a, a fork debate, which is very likely to happen again uh, in in any cryptocurrency, then the fund that controls that Bitcoin now has a very large voice. Their shareholders don't. They don't get to choose which fork to the the fund is going to follow uh, in a Bitcoin debate, and maybe the fund follows both. Maybe it gives them some of their Bitcoin from the other fork. We already saw that level of influence when it it actually occurred during the uh, August first fork and the user activated soft fork scaling debate, Bitcoin Cash. Um, Bitcoin Unlimited, Bitcoin XD, all of that scaling debate with all of these fork coins uh, that were available and the various clients that supported them. We saw that large custodial exchanges had a very strong voice in the ecosystem. They were able to decide if they were going to support or not going to support on behalf of 10 million customers, and essentially moving opinion on a very large amount of currency. An ETF will do that, and it will do that on an even bigger scale. So it will give institutional uh, players access to Bitcoin, but it won't give them a voice in the consensus and governance of Bitcoin. That will be held by a centralized fund manager, and that centralized fund manager will speak on behalf of all of the people who have uh, that exposure to the ETFs, because they actually hold the keys to the Bitcoin. That is a very bad thing. Um, it's not going to be the end of Bitcoin. It is going to cause manipulation of the prices. It is going to cause manipulation of the debates about scaling decisions. And um, if uh, there are forks, it is going to give these parties a very large uh, determining voice uh, in forks, uh, which probably means that eventually you're going to see them split off and form their own corpo Bitcoin. A corporate version of Bitcoin. Let me give you a simple example. Um, there's a new change being proposed for the Bitcoin ecosystem that allows completely anonymous um, confidential transactions with encrypted values, encrypted senders, encrypted recipients. Uh, and this change is being proposed as a soft fork. Mm, does the ETF manager adopt this soft fork or not? Well, um, they have a big problem because if the authorities are really um, pushing hard against anonymous private Bitcoin, uh, they may feel obliged to not adopt that change. Now that means that a hell of a lot of Bitcoin is floating around that doesn't have privacy and anonymity protections because the custodian of that Bitcoin hasn't adopted that change. Effectively, you now have two markets for Bitcoin: private Bitcoin and not so private Bitcoin. Um, these are the kinds of problems that happen with an ETF. ETFs fundamentally violate the, the underlying principle of peer-to-peer -peer money, where each user is not uh, operating through a custodian, but has direct control of their money, because they have direct control of their keys. Your keys, your Bitcoin. Not your keys, 
not your Bitcoin. An ETF is a multi-billion dollar, not your keys, not your Bitcoin vehicle. Um, so that's why I am against it. And I wouldn't buy any, but it is going to happen anyway. Uh, and it is going to happen because there's enormous market appetite and very little technical knowledge. So institutional investors simply can't at the moment hold Bitcoin directly. I think eventually it's going to create two categories of institutional investors. Those who have the technical know-how uh, to actually hold real Bitcoin and gain all of the advantages of that and really have financial independence versus those institutional investors who don't have that technical ability and therefore always use an intermediary. Very much like in the current Bitcoin ecosystem, you have users who hold their own keys and users who use a custodian uh, exchange wallet and effectively are second tier uh, Bitcoin users, if they're even Bitcoin users at all. All right, folks, uh, Big Cheds is a professional trader and one of the founding analysts of Bitcoin Live, an educational platform for crypto. He also has a background in psychology, which he uses to help people deal better with FOMO and other emotional decisions in trading. Do you think the ETF is going to be the thing that pushes Bitcoin to 100,000? Um, you know, the whole uh, tail wagging the dog. Um, well, it, you know, I think Bitcoin has natural momentum pushing it to uh, 100,000 when you have just not enough supply. I think a lot of people who are buying Bitcoin are taking it off exchanges and they're holding it, generally speaking. I think that will push it towards 100K. I think it definitely helps. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, it gives some people more confidence to buy it, you know, because because Wall Street's getting involved. You know, they've been involved for a while now with with other, um, you know, like GBTC and stuff like that. But it definitely gives them a little bit more confidence. And I think it, it will push it to 100K, but I don't think it needed that uh, necessarily, given the natural momentum and natural trajectory, you know, on longer time frames like the weekly chart. You know, just a nice, beautiful uptrend on the weekly chart, and uh, yeah, I would say. And so, that's do you have any direction. like price targets that that you're looking at specifically for Bitcoin or Ethereum in kind of the current environment? I, I really hate targets. People ask me that because I feel like a, mm. when you when you focus on a price target, it takes you away from what your job as an ant technical analyst is to observe the price and look for clues of strengthening or weakening momentum, and that's kind of how I approach this. Mm. Um, you know. A price I don't have a price target on, on, on Bitcoin right now, uh, per se. I have support targets. I have the rising MA50 in the weekly. I have the daily EMA8, right? We talked about that 52K level. I have support targets that I want to buy. I've identified levels that I'd, I would um, believe to be kind of a discount. You know what I mean? A discount to, to the current market. But I, you know, you can do a Fibonacci extension and you can you can figure out what the, the height of a move is going to be, stuff like that. And if you have a well-defined pattern, you know, uh, like a head and shoulders, like an inverted head and shoulders, you can use that uh, for a target. Like this 80-day rectangle, you could have done that. You could have taken the height of the rectangle and you could have extended out from that a target, which I think was like 55, 60K. So if you have a well-defined pattern, you know, in classical charting, that will give you some type of a measured move you know, quote unquote type of a target. But when we're in essentially more or less price discovery, we're in kind of a, a brand new territory. Um, you know, I'm not going to say 74K or 75K. It's a round number. That sounds great. You know, everybody wins. I mean, sure. that's fine. 